Okay, and welcome back. Um, so this unit or this lesson is all about the energy changes associated with phase changes. So uh, we're going to jump right in and um, talk about phase changes and the energy associated with them. Whoops, we need to be here. There we go. Okay, so when we talk about phase changes and the um, energy changes that are associated with those, we're talking about transitions of matter between gas, liquid, and solid states. And we know that each change of state has a certain energy associated with it. Um, we talk about the heat of fusion. That is the energy required to change a solid at its melting point to a liquid. So it's important to remember that when we talk about heat of fusion or heat of vaporization, we're not talking about the amount of energy required to change the temperature of anything. During a change of state, the temperature is not changing. All of the energy that is going into or coming out of a system is due to changes of energy associated with breaking or forming intermolecular attractions. It's just changing the orientation and the attractions of molecules for each other. So heat of fusion is the energy required to change a solid at its melting point to a liquid. And we can see this is the heat of fusion for these four different substances, butane, diethyl ether, water, and mercury. Heat of vaporization is the energy required to change a liquid at its boiling point to a gas. And you'll notice that these numbers are much, much larger. So heat of vaporization is always larger for the same substance than heat of fusion. And that's because when something goes from a solid phase to a liquid phase, you're breaking some of the intermolecular attractions, but you're not breaking all of them. But we know that when things are in their gas form, that there are no intermolecular attractions. Those molecules are so far apart, so removed from one another, that all of those have to be broken in order for um, that energy, that matter to change state. So it always requires more heat to vaporize than it does to melt. So at the melting and boiling point, that energy does not go into speeding up the molecules. It simply goes into pulling them farther apart from each other. During a phase change, temperature does not change. So when we talk about the standard molar enthalpy of vaporization, we are talking about the energy required to convert one mole of a liquid to one mole of corresponding gas at the boiling point. So we'll see enthalpies of vaporization that are not standard molar enthalpy, but would be per gram. So you need to make sure that you pay attention to the units. Always requires energy to convert something to a gas. So delta H of vaporization is always positive. If your liquids have higher attractive forces, stronger intermolecular forces, they're going to have higher delta H of vaporization. Again, standard molar enthalpy of fusion is delta H of fusion. This is the energy required to convert one mole of liquid to one mole of solid at the melting point. Um, now, written this way, molar enthalpy of fusion it's going to be negative because this is the energy converting one liquid, one mole of liquid to one mole of solid. So this is actually the freezing enthalpy. Um, and again, higher intermolecular forces, higher delta H of fusion. Okay, so let's take a look at a heating or cooling curve. This one is a heating curve. So you'll notice when we look at the heating curve that there are four, uh, five different segments. Um, and you'll also notice that they have different lengths. And we have three segments where we have a um, change in temperature. So that's when we're in one phase and all of the energy, this heat being added, is going into changing temperature. We have these two plateaus. Those plateaus occur 
when the energy that's being added instead of going into changing temperature is going into changing state. So during these parts that we see a change in temperature, we're going to use the equation that we've used before, Q equals M times CP times delta T. We can't use that for these plateaus because the energy is not going into changing temperature. That would give us zero. and We know that energy is going in. So for these sections, we're going to have to use the delta H of fusion or the delta H of vaporization, and we're going to have to multiply it by the number of moles or if we're given it per grams, then we're good there. Okay, so let's look at a practice problem here. Um, we're given this question. What is the enthalpy change during the process in which 50 grams of steam at 112 degrees Celsius is cooled to ice at 30 degrees Celsius? Well, in order to be able to answer this question, so this wouldn't look quite like this curve. We would be starting here and going down cooling down to 100 degrees, then condensing, and then cooling down again to zero degrees, and then freezing, and then cooling down again to the final temperature of negative 30 degrees Celsius. So in order to do that, remember, these three segments, we're gonna use Q equals M times C times delta T. When we have a change in temperature, we use Q equals M times C times delta T. When we don't have a change in temperature, we're gonna use that Q is equal to the enthalpy of vaporization or the enthalpy of fusion times the number of moles. So I need to know specific heats and I need to know the enthalpy of fusion and the enthalpy of vaporization. So I have those values here. And you'll notice that the enthalpy of vaporization and the enthalpy of fusion are given in kilojoules per mole and specific heats are given in joules per gram Kelvin or gram degree Celsius. So let's work this out. We're gonna share the visualizer now. If we can, there we go. Maybe. If it will let me. There we go. Okay. So it's asking us for the enthalpy change when 50 grams of steam at 112 degrees Celsius is cooled to ice at negative 30 degrees Celsius. So we have our enthalpy of fusion, our enthalpy of vaporization. We have the specific heats of ice and water and steam. And you notice that those are all different. So I'm just gonna draw for myself a quick graph to remind myself that it's gonna go down and then it's going to condense and then it's going to go down again. And then it's going to freeze and then it's going to go down again. So in this segment and this segment and this segment, I'm going to use Q equals M times C times delta T. In this segment, I'm going to use Q equals delta H V times the number of moles because I'm given it in kilojoules per mole. And in this segment, I'm going to use Q equals delta H of fusion times the number of moles. Now, um, so I'm going to call this section one, two, three, four, and five. So Q1 is going to equal the mass, 50 grams, times the specific heat of steam, because that's this section, I have steam here. So that's 1.84 joules per gram degree Celsius times um, the change in temperature. So it's going from 112 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So that's 12.0 degrees Celsius. And that's negative because the temperature is going down. 
Okay, for my second segment, I'm going to use the enthalpy of vaporization times the number of moles. But this enthalpy of vaporization, that's the amount of energy I have to put in to make it into steam. So I'm going to have a negative because it's going to be giving off that energy. 40.67 kilojoules per mole. Now I need to know how many moles of water I have. Well, I have 50.0 grams times 18.02 grams of water per one mole of water. And that's going to give me an answer in kilojoules. Okay, so Q3 is going to, we're going back to Q equals MC delta T. So we have again the 50 grams. Now this is the C of water. So I'm gonna use 4.18, the specific heat of water. And my temperature change is from 100 degrees to zero degrees. So my temperature change is negative 100.0 degrees Celsius. And now for my fourth segment here, I'm going to use the opposite again of heat of fusion, negative 6.01 kilojoules per mole times um, the number of moles, so again, 50.0 grams times 18.02 grams of water per one mole of water. And Q5 is going to equal, again, Q equals mass times C times delta T, so 50.0 grams. Now I'm looking for the specific heat of ice, so that's 2.03 joules per gram degree Celsius times the change in temperature. It's going from zero to negative 30, so that's negative 30.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, so quick math. Okay, this gives me negative 1.104 joules. Grams cancel out, degrees Celsius cancel out, I'm left with joules. I'm not going to round until the end. This should have three significant figures, so it would have to be 1.10 times 10 to the third. I have a hundred and 13 kilojoules. Notice now that I have kilojoules, so we have to pay attention to our units. I have 209,000 joules. Again, three significant figures. That's significant, that's significant, that's significant. Um, Sixteen point seven kilojoules. Negative three thousand and forty-five joules. Okay, so this is negative one point one oh four kilojoules. This is negative two hundred. Oh, sorry, twenty point nine kilojoules. This is negative three point oh four five kilojoules. And we get 155, negative 155 kilojoules. So 155 kilojoules of energy are released by that process. So um, a few things we can learn when we're looking at these curves. The relative size 
of the enthalpy of vaporization and the enthalpy of fusion. The steepness of this slope is going to be determined by the uh, specific heat. So if we see two charts like this and we're asked to compare them, um, the one with the steeper slope is gonna be the one with the larger specific heat. Uh, so as always, if you have questions, let me know.